So in this video, we'll do a couple of exercises um, on integration by the method of integration by parts. And um, let's look at the first example here, which is the integration for the inverse tangent of x. And surprisingly, um, to solve this problem, we can do it by integration by parts. And let's see how we can solve this. You see, uh, we don't have that many choices of u and dv. I think we have to let u be the inverse tan of x and dx be the remaining term, which is dv, and u is the uh, inverse tan of x, and dv is going to be dx. And uh, same as the previous video, uh, every time to apply the formula for integration by part, we have to know all the four terms. So we have to write down correspondingly the du and the v term. And u to dv is a differentiation problem. Please recall the derivative of inverse tan of x. It is 1 over 1 plus x squared, right, uh, times dx. And um, the dv to v is an integration problem. You have to integrate basically 1. So uh, you're getting vbx. And uh, let's just write down the next step. So we have to write down these terms uh, very carefully. So um, let's do it together. u is inverse tan of x. And v is going to be just x. And uh, minus the integral of x times du. du is 1 over 1 plus x squared times dx. And uh, please focus on the integral we have. Let's see whether it is easy or not. If it is something extremely difficult, it seems that maybe our method of integration by part is not working. But I think this one is something we can do. Please look at the current integral now. You see, the fact is that to solve this integral, uh, please don't use integration by part the second time. It doesn't make sense to use integration by part here because um, usually integration by part works at the best uh, for certain product of functions. But this one is a quotient. I think you may have a difficulty uh, no matter which choice of u and dv you use to deduce the next step. So uh, it gives you a sense that the integration by part for the second time is a failure. So instead of the by part formula for such problems, the better way to do is to let um, some variables, um, it doesn't matter because I use u and v already above, maybe I can use w. But essentially, uh, the method is the method of substitution, right? So I can use w be the denominator. So please note that I'm not using integration by part here, I'm just using one single substitution. So dw is going to be 2x times dx. And please take a look at this integral now. This integral is what? Please transform all the variables to u to w. So uh, the denominator is w. And the remaining term is x times dx. And uh, x times dx is here. So we can put it back here. So uh, x times dx is going to be what? x times dx is the dw over 2, right? dw over 2. So now, uh, I believe that you're able to integrate this function because the function is half times integral of 1 over w, which is half times ln w. So uh, essentially, uh, this is the answer to the integral here. Uh, this answer is what is half times ln of 1 plus x squared, right? And uh, now uh, we can write the final answer down to this problem. The final answer is going to be x times inverse 10 of x minus half times ln of 1 plus x squared the whole thing plus the constant c. And that's the answer to the integral for the inverse 10. And let me make a note here. So if you're asked to integrate um, inverse sine of x or inverse cosine of x, I claim that the similar method works for this problem. Similar method in the sense that uh, first, you have to apply the integration by part formula one time. And after the integration by part formula, like what we have done in the second term, um, then you have to use um, a u substitution to work out the second term, which is an integral on the right hand side of the integration by part formula. And at the end, you're able to get the answer to um, these two problems if you do it properly. And uh, let's look at the example. So now you're asked to integrate the product of two functions. Uh, it is e of x times sine x. Uh, I claim that is a very special problem here. It is special in the sense that if you use the integration by parts, uh, normally the choice of u and dv matters. If you use a wrong choice, it's not going to work out. However, in this problem, I claim that no matter which choice of u and dv you use, you're going to solve the problem at the end by a very special trick. And anyway, let's start the problem now. So let, 
fix our choice like this. You can choose another choice. You can make u be sine x. Uh, at the end, we'll still work it out. Anyway, u is e of x, and dv is going to be sine x times dx. And uh, let's do the du, which is derivative. So e of x is unchanged as a derivative. And dv to v is an integration problem. You are integrating sine x, which is minus cosine x, right? And with all of these items, we can go on to the next step. So the integral v times du. And anyway, u times v is what? It is e of x times minus cosine x minus integral of v is minus cosine x. du is e of x times dx. And um, let's let me write down the next step in a more proper way. Minus e of x times cosine x. You see minus minus become plus. Uh, so your plus integral of e of x times cosine x times dx. Now, let's pause a little bit. You see, originally you are given a function e of x times sine x. After the integration by part one time, you are getting the function e of x times cosine x, right? So uh, theoretically, it doesn't look like the integral. This one is easier than the original problem. And please recall that usually our integration by part formula works when the updated integral here, which is the second term on the right-hand side, is easier than the original problem. However, this case doesn't look like this. So it seems that our integration by part is not very helpful in this case. Please imagine what you are going to get if you are going to do the integration by part the second time here, on here. If you do the integration by part the second time, you can try to make a guess before writing all the steps down. The guess is that maybe you will change the cosine x back to sine x, which is the original uh, function. But the e of x is unchanged. Because you see, for the first time of integration by part, we are not changing the function e of x, right? Uh, we are only changing sine x to cosine x. So uh, if you do it the second time here, it doesn't look like you're helping uh, to get the answer at the end. But I claim that as a shortcut, we need to play around to get the final answer after using the integration by part the second time. Let's see how to do it. du is going to be the derivative of e of x, which is unchanged. And dv to v is going to be the integral of cosine x, which is sine x. And um, let's do the integral, uh, which is the second time of integration by part here. So you see, um, let me write down all the steps here. So it's going to be uh, uv, uv, v du. So u is uh, e, e to the x, v is sine x, minus integral of v, which is sine x, du is e to the power x times dx. And um, now, that is our expectation, right? Please look at this integral. It is not changed. It is actually the same as our question at the beginning. Because at the beginning, I was actually asking you to integrate e of x times sine x, right? So uh, now, let's play around this problem by using a special shortcut. So now you see my plan is to write down the right-hand side of the equation in a more proper way. So uh, basically, you're getting something like that minus the integral of e of x times sine x dx. Uh, what is the left-hand side? The left-hand side was our original problem, right? Our or original problem is actually the same as this term, uh, which is the last term on the right-hand side, which is the integral of e of x times sine x dx, right? Uh, please note that these two are the same. So I can let this be i, which means we have an uh, algebraic equation, i equals minus e of x cosine x plus e of x sine x minus i, right? And please recall mathematics, we want to solve for this i. We want to get this answer. I think we can get it uh, algebraically now. We can push this term to the left-hand side. So it's an addition. Now it becomes 2i equals minus e of x cosine x plus e of x sine x, which means uh, the answer we want, which is i, it is actually the same as what? We can divide the factor 2 to the right-hand side which is the same as uh, what we have on the right-hand side, the whole thing divided by 2, right? And that's the end uh, to our problem. You see, this problem is very special because uh, at the end, we are not really solving it by keep doing the integration by part infinitely many times. We are just doing an algebraic um, cancellation to solve for the i. We can do it because we obtain an equation 
which is batch sense that the integral we want to look at on the left hand side is equal to something on the right hand side which is an expression which actually contains the same term so it gives us a chance to solve for i by algebraically I just solve for the i right without any integration but uh, this kind of problem is very special and usually when you're asked to do the integration by part you are not going to see something like this usually so this one is just special